Hey everyone, great to have you back in the channel and in today's episode we're going to talk about basic loops in Emacs Lisp. First of all, in the previous episode I failed to mention that uh, like a, I failed to mention one of the key aspects of an association list. Let's have a look at it really quick. So um, we learned from the previous episode that like an association list is basically a list of key, pair, um, key value pairs, right? Let's define a new list uh, A and put two pairs A1 and B2 in it, right? So as you can see, A has two keys, A and B, with their uh, associated values. Now, if I set the... If I actually... Um, add another key pair, like uh, key value pair with key B to our list, for example, like this. Um, yeah, something like this, right? As you can see, uh, we, like we have two keys or like we have two Bs basically in our list. Whenever we want to actually look up uh, B in our um, list, it all like it always returns the first occurrence of the key that you're looking for. So that's actually a really important aspect of an association list. I failed to mention it in the previous episode. So basically, I can repeat this a step with another value for B being like a thousand, right? And as you can see, I have three Bs in my list, but whenever I look up B, it's always go it is going to return the recent version of B that I in the inserted in the list. That's really important. I, I forgot to mention that uh, in the previous episode. Sorry about that. Also, a friend in YouTube uh, I, uh, named uh, I hope I'm not butchering your name, Tomas or Tamash, maybe. Um, Mention something really important. Um, so if you look at the command log that I have in my Emacs right now, I the way I usually evaluate um, expressions is to like navigate to the end of the expression and use Control X, Control E to evaluate it. As you can see, the function is eval last sex, right? This is my preferred way of uh, uh, evaluating uh, expressions but it's not the only way there there's like some other ways and as Tamash actually mentioned if there's another function called eval dash define or uh, define functions right by you by using this function you, you can automatically evaluate all the top level uh, expressions that you have in your buffer it's like really handy when you develop some Emacs list and you want to uh, with one function evaluate reevaluate all the function uh, definitions or uh, other type of definitions that you have uh, you can refer to the documents of this function it has a like a key binding uh, assigned to it too but if you don't like it you can obviously change it it's a great way to evaluate top level functions top level expressions okay topic of the day so the actually um, we have more than uh, today. I'm going to only talk about three types of loops, uh, but um, there's a, in the next episode I'm going to uh, talk about more uh, loops and basically type of loops that I like, like functional style loops uh, in the next episode. But uh, let's just start by the basic stuff. The very first type of loop that Lisp ha Emacs Lisp has is while loop like almost any other programming language the form is basically uh like this we it's like a function call while is not a function but uh you know what i mean like the evaluation by the evaluation rules of um lists in lisp uh we try to find a for a special form or a function called while we had to provide a condition and the body for the loop. 
so the way it works it evaluates the condition if it's at, uh, like if it has a true c value it actually evaluates the body and loop back to the uh, when the body is over like you can provide as many uh, expressions as you like in the body and when it's done it goes back to the top of the body and reevaluate condition again if it truthy continues it do uh, it does uh, this as long as the condition is true and when it changes like when the condition is false it just return uh, the return value of the evaluation of while is always the, like condition itself so since you only get out of the, a while loop only when condition is false so it's safe to say that a while loop is always evaluates to false right always evaluates to false if your condition is always true you never get out of the while anyway right um and obviously we need to explicitly set the condition to be false whenever we want to jump out of the like break out of the while loop here is an example um let's say we have a uh, like a local variable called foo and we set it to one right it doesn't have to be local but you know uh, that's the way we write lisp um you seriously like actually it's a good idea to talk about something right now. Um, when I see uh, newcomers uh, in Lisp start writing Lisp with their background in other program languages, I see them using set Q in terms of Emacs Lisp or defr quite a lot in local scopes. Uh, again, anything that you use, any uh, defr or set Q. Uh, a special form that you use result in def uh, defining a global variable. If you want to have a local variable, you have to use let. Um, so here we have a local variable called foo and we set it to one. The condition of uh, this loop is basically uh, if foo is less than 10. We start, and in the body, we just uh, print out foo uh, in the message buffer and set foo again like we increase foo by one if i run this one and go back to the message buffer as you can see uh one two three four and so on and it returns nil at the end because as i mentioned it always uh, evaluates to false and nil is false in emacs list um so here's another example with a list. Let's say foo this time is a list that contains bar and bus. While foo, so we want to know as long, we want to iterate uh, like through the body as long as foo has an element in it. And we always like, and we take the head or the car and put it in the message buffer and then set foo to the cooler of previous foo so it's like take the head or take the car print it out and then set it to the rest of the list so it's like iterating the list one by one let's see how it works and as you can see bar and bars and it returns nil again it's quite simple like it's fairly simple but it's a little bit verbose. You have to write a lot of, uh, <coughs> sorry, expressions to um, use a while loop. Just because of that, there's two macros, do list and do times, that make our lives uh, a bit easier. Since we didn't talk about macros that much, it's only like you just have to know that it's a macro. It doesn't change anything about uh, the way we use it. The form is quite simple, uh, do list obviously, uh, followed by a list. The first thing in that list is the variable you want to assign to the element of the list for the current iteration, right? And the list itself and an optional expression uh, called result. So when the list is over, when we iterate over all the elements in the list, um, 
do list is actually going to evaluate that result expression and the evaluation result of do list would be the result of that expression um i'll show you in an example sorry so um again um it's it, it kind of like the previous example that uh, we had a look at for a while it takes the car of the list and put it in the variable element and iterate the body uh, sorry evaluates the body and on the next iteration it moves to the uh, next element in the list so here's another example again we set uh, the variable foo to a list containing nine eight seven and so on this time we run do list we evaluate do list and we want a, the local variable x to contain the current um, element of who and uh, again as i mentioned we pass number 10 as the result expression it, it literally can be on any expression so let's do uh, this for example right so whenever the body is over and we iterate over all the elements in who we're going to evaluate this result uh, expression and the result of this one would be the result of evaluation of uh, do list so let's have a look as you can see it returns 11 right and if we go back to the message buffer it prints out all the elements in foo for us and at the end uh, number 11. Um, but as i mentioned do list is a macro we're going to talk about uh, macros a lot in the future. They're really important and we need to um, understand them quite well. But for now, um, just to show you what do list actually uh, does under the hood, uh, we can use macro expand like to see what like our macro call uh, translates into something like that, you know? Um, if you don't understand this, don't worry. When we get to macros, it would be really clear. But I'm, I'm just calling uh, macro expand dash one and I pass it uh, the form that I just ran earlier, but I quote it. I don't want to run it. I just want to know what is it, uh, what does this macro expand into or what form it transforms to, you know? Um, let's see. As you can see, uh, here's the result actually. It translates into a while loop on its own with some variable names that it automatically creates for us. We don't have to be worried about that. And just like the example that we saw for while, it sets the, uh, sorry, it actually uh, uses the car of that list to set to X and then our body and finally at the end in, it uses uh, it wants to return number 10 which was our result expression so that's uh, that's how uh, do list works it's like much shorter than using while so you you would see, see do list quite a lot when you when you're reading emacs list code there's another macro called do times uh, which is quite similar to do list it's it's again a macro but the difference is it you give it a number and it runs for that given uh like it iterates uh for that specific times of uh yeah that's it and um you know it's like for in other languages you like in c or c plus plus you're like uh you want to run uh your body in certain number of times we we use do times here the form is quite simple. This var here is the variable, the local variable you want to create as your iterator or that contains the, or index that contains the current number of iteration uh, and how many times you want to run the body basically. Um, so as an example, let's say if we is 10, we want X to be our index and we want to, uh, run the, like evaluate the body who number of times which is 10 10 times right so if i evaluate it and go back to the message um, um, buffer as you can see 
it just prints out uh, from number zero to nine. Um, quite simple, right? So let's uh, let's look at uh, the expanded version to see what does do times expands into. Again, as uh, like it's quite similar uh, to the to the example that we had for a while. It just defines a new local variable, sets foo into that, and then sets the default value of x to zero. Uh, these two are part of the uh, let definition, and then in a while it makes sure that the condition is like x is uh, less than this variable our body and at the end adds one to x and loop over this function is add exactly add one it's a function on its own so as you can see two times uh, is pretty simple as well so we have a fundamental loop called for a while and we have two macros that kind of simplify while for us for different use cases do times and uh, do list um that's it for today for the next episode we're going to talk about like recursion map map car reduce and those type of loops there are loops somehow but like a functional style of uh, iterating through some uh, collection of data that's it for today hope it was useful and see you in the next episode